Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey everybody, how you doing? Good, good. I'm recording this on May 4th. And uh, instead of talking about rideshare driving government funding, what I thought I would talk about are five things you could do during this time of the pandemic, the great pandemic of our lifetime. Let's hope. Let's hope this is the only one. Yeah, so... If you're a rideshare driver, you're either decided not to drive, or even if you are driving, it's uh, there's just not much money to be made, so it's hardly worth it. Uh, So there are many people out there who have a lot more time on their hands. They're at home, sheltering in place. What do you do? What do you do? So what I thought I would share with you were five ideas I had of things you could do to make this time valuable and you can uh you know do something um that'll contribute to your life after after this passes so the first one is get in shape right get in shape so many many of us you know could lose a few pounds and uh if you're at home you may think well that's going to be even harder cuz i'm i'm at home and it's just like you want to eat and there's not as much activity right not true though you know you can get out and walk and if you go on the internet and you just do a body weight training at home you'll find all kinds of exercises you can do at home that will uh kick your ass i've started to do a daily uh plank for a minute, that's that's as much as I can get going. Started out with is a minute, but uh, wow, I can really feel it uh, impact my whole body. So that's one thing you could do. Just put together a plan. You know, maybe four days out of the week, do something. Spend an hour doing some kind of getting in shape. Maybe do some stretching. Uh, do some kind of exercise if you have some equipment that helps. But um, go out and walk. Just uh, you can do some great things. So that's one idea, getting in shape. Next thing I would suggest is uh, eating healthy. This is a great time to really evaluate. You can do a lot of research on the internet about what kind of foods are good for you and what kind of foods aren't so good for you. And you'll find it's quite an extreme and deep rabbit hole you can go down. There are people who uh, swear by the vegan diet. There are people who swear by the paleo diet. There are people who swear by the keto diet. There's even some people that swear by the all meat diet, right? The carnivore diet. So do your research. And a lot of it is experimenting and seeing what works best for your body. I find for me that as long as I stay away from carbs and sugars... And I focus more on meats and vegetables. Um, that works seems to work really well for me. Now I'm an older guy, so it's much harder for me to like lose weight and avoid having a gut. I don't know if you knew this, but from the age of 30, a man's testosterone level decreases. And as your testosterone decreases, the uh, propensity of your gut to grow <laughs> goes up. So it takes a uh, incredible amount of work to keep your stomach flat as you get older. Um, And the main thing there is what you're putting into your body. 
uh, carbs and sugars tend to produce fat. So that's why I, I do a uh, kind of a, a, a keto diet, but not, a, not like a rigid keto diet. I will have the occasional treat, especially on my cheat day, which is Sundays. So the concept of a cheat day is a day that you can eat whatever you want. So for the other six days, you're pretty disciplined. You stick to your diet, but you know you've got that day where you can go eat the haagen Chunky Monkey or the Carnitas Super Burrito, you know, with a margarita. Um, you've got that cheat day to look forward to. So that's the second thing you could possibly do is, uh, you know, really, really evaluate what you eat and, and change, change your, your diet for the better. Third thing you could do is uh, start a business. So, you know, I've talked a lot about having a plan B. Well, it's a great time to get to work on a plan B because you've got time. You've got an internet connection. you got a computer, laptop, whatever. Um, you can do a lot of research. Uh, you can buy some uh, really inexpensive uh, programs through companies like Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y. You can, uh, you know, do, do, it's remarkable what's available to us just at, just, uh, you know, at our fingertips. So if you've been thinking about starting a business, whether it's an internet business or a business you want to start once this thing passes, this is a great time to do it. Just give yourself an hour a day to start. You know, just say for an hour a day, I'm going to, you know, at least research what the new business could be. And then once you've done your research, then you can figure out how you want to contribute to that industry. You know, what's your skill set? What can you contribute? And then go from there. So that's the third thing. So, so far we have you can get in shape. You can eat healthy. You can start a business. The fourth thing you could do is learn a new skill. My gosh, there are so many skills that can uh, you can learn that can you can get paid for right off the top of my head, you know, learning how to code, learning how to code, learning how to do uh, programming, coding. Um, again, there are classes in Udemy that will allow you to learn, you know, different languages. And it just takes, again, a disciplined approach. Give yourself an hour a day. You know, if you got the time, give yourself an hour a day or two hours a day and just commit to it. So much about life is committing. So that's a, that's a skill you could learn. Gosh, if you want to become a, uh, you know, a, a, a professional trainer, you know, you can, uh, you can develop that skill, you know, by doing some research and getting educated. Um, perhaps you want to learn a new language. That would be a new skill that you could learn. There's just a tremendous amount of things that you can learn um, through the Internet while you are at home. And then you can monetize that skill. So uh, that would be the fourth thing I would recommend. And then the fifth thing is something kind of out of left field, but I think it's awesome. And that is to uh, read some of the old classic novels that have ever been written in the history of mankind. When are you going to get a chance to do this? You know, everyone's so freaking busy all the time running around. Well, not now. Um, I made a list of just five that I could think of. Old Man in the Sea. Old Man in the Sea, what a great, great novel by uh, Ernest Hemingway. You could also pick A Movable Feast, The Sun Also Rises, um, all just fantastic novels written by Ernest Hemingway. Moby Dick, Moby Dick, another great, great, uh, uh, great novel, fantastic story. The Great Gatsby uh, by F. Scott Fitzgerald, another great novel. You know, you can just find yourself a little bit of time each day and just shut everything off, put your phone on mute, and just read. You know, just get back in touch with the simple things of life. Uh, another great one is The Grapes of Wrath. This is a book I read as a, as a kid in school. You know, I can still remember how dusty everything was and dismal and dry. And gosh, what a great novel. And The Count of Monte Cristo. Uh, this is a book I have not read, uh, which I would like to read, and perhaps that will be a book I will read here while I'm home. Um, there's a great old version of this mo uh, movie, a version of the, of the Count of Monte Cristo, 
which I highly recommend. It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, movie. So, you know, you can Google the 100 greatest novels of all time, and you'll get a full list of, uh, of books that are out there, right? Um, Charles and the Chocolate Factory, Les Miserables, uh, Another Country by James Baldwin, right? The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, The Catcher in the Rye, Brideshead Revisited, Vanity Fair, these are the Iliad by Homer, right? These are all just amazing, amazing uh, novels that you could read. The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton, Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. Great, great novels, all right? The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, a lot of people haven't read that, by Mark Twain. Just, uh, it's all out there. So, when you feel bored and you feel like, gosh, I'm missing my old life. You got to just uh, pivot from that, reframe that to, okay, my life's going to come back bef- sooner than I expect. And all of a sudden you're going to say, wow, I kind of miss all that free time I had. Well, here you got this. That time is now. And we've got that free time. So uh, take advantage of it. Just do something amazing with your life right now. Just do something that'll just, you'll be so proud of when, uh, when everything gets back to normal. And you'll say, Wow. I actually read the novel Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. How about that, right? <laughs> right? It's uh, pretty amazing. Pretty, pretty amazing. I read uh, Moby Dick by, by Herman Melville, right? So many great books. The Call of the Wild by Jack London. I read that when I was a kid also. Crime and Punishment. I read that one too by Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky. Yeah, so... Great stuff out there. Great, great stuff. So that's it. That's it. I just wanted to, you know, kind of get off the doom and the gloom of this whole thing as much as I could and say, you know, there's some great stuff we could be doing. All right. All right. All right. That is a wrap. As we got Bruce Springsteen playing in the background there, hanging out on the back streets. I'll say a fist bump to all you drivers out there. You all rock it every day. I honor you. If you got a story to tell, Connect with me at nomadj.com. Click on contact and there's a form and boom, uh, send it in. We can talk and uh, I can bring you onto this podcast. That would be awesome. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. This is Nomad Jay saying this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.